today I am joined by Neil. Neil is our principal VFX artist and he has over two decades of experience in the industry. I'm so excited uh, to hear what he has to say today. And Neil, if you could start, because I, I asked him a bunch of questions about VFX yesterday and it was so interesting. And the answer that interested me the most, uh, Neil, was you were explaining the difference between um, traditional game development um, and how VFX are made uh, and versus making VFX for core and VFX that need to be used by um, everyone uh, for a whole number of different reasons. And I was just hoping you could uh, kind of go into that again. Absolutely. Hello, everyone. I'm Neil. Um, I blow things up for a living. <laughs> it's fun. Awesome. Um, so yeah, really the difference between uh, traditional development and developing for core in terms of effects is um, so in a traditional development environment, uh, generally you'll be approached by design or one of the other departments and they'll come to you and say, hey, we've got this idea for a particular weapon. You know, it's going to do this, this and this. It'll have this kind of buff or debuff, what have you. And you'll get all these specifications for it. And due to the setup, you already know what your camera angles are going to be. You're working on a third person over the shoulder you know, action shooter. So that comes with it certain, you know, design elements. So you can plan for those when you're developing the effects um, because effects are all largely smoke and mirrors. Um, we use a whole bunch of miscellaneous tricks to fake most everything that we do. Um, because usually it's too expensive to do real-time fluid simulations and stuff like that. So it's all a bunch of fakery. Um, so in the case of developing for core, on the other hand, uh, we don't have any of that information. We don't know how far away from the camera it's going to be. We don't know if the camera's going to be running through it, if it's going to be a teeny tiny effect on screen, or if it's going to be something absolutely massive. And so... Developing for core requires a lot more thought and it requires turning each effect into, well, moving it away from being just an effect that's bespoke for a specific situation to something that is a mini program that has to accommodate all of these different situations and still do so at a reasonable performance point, um, which can awesome. be challenging at times. Um, so what Neil is saying here, guys, if you're reading between the lines, is his job is actually more difficult than traditional uh, VFX and it's more challenging. Um, he is, we're honestly quite lucky to have him. So please, if you have any questions uh, for Neil, um, ask them in chat. Um, I've been wanting to have him on Core Live for a really long time. Um, so I'm quite excited. Um, oh, hey, K-pop Sim. Uh, so Neil, I'm just gonna have you uh, dive into uh, your work and take it away, please. Absolutely. Um, so for today, kind of what I was gonna show was just honestly a bunch of random things. Um, some of our new stuff that we've been working on and some of the stuff that's just come out, uh, a lot of material work, um, like these uh, traveling bulbs and the neon uh, that we've added, uh, which people are already using to, you know, great effect. Some of the games that I've seen come out with this is just, I mean, it's really beautiful. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I was just going to cover some of that and hopefully answer a lot of questions. Um, and then Neil, is this a, a world you made? Yeah. Yeah. This is just a, <sighs> oh my God. This is just a level that I, you know, slapped together when I was testing all of the, uh, neon and bulb stuff and just started uh, using some of the wonderful templates provided by the environment team and uh, just kind of went from there and it grew into this little street scene. That is awesome. So yeah, when I say we're lucky to have Neil, this is him slapping something together, guys. <laughs> um, everyone in chat is really enjoying this environment. Oh yeah. 
Um, and they're little nice little additions from the uh, you know animation team and character team. Um, I love some of the new stuff that we've been adding. It's just really it's bringing a lot of life to these environments uh, when you use it right. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So the the first thing I think I was going to cover is just talking about how effects in core work in terms of how I kind of thought people would utilize them. Um, which is to say, you know, to horribly mangle whatever the original thing was and turn it into something unique and amazing and awesome and completely not what I intended it to be. And that is what I hope everyone does. Uh, effects in core largely reward experimentation and playing. They should be fun to use, like this waterfall, uh, so basic waterfall ring. And I thought what we would do is turn it upside down and then maybe turn it into kind of an energy ring. I know it's an odd use for a waterfall, but, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that, that is the amazing aspect to core is that all of these things can be reused and changed in so many different ways. So <laughs> yeah. Creative misuse, definitely encouraged. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, I love seeing creative misuse. Um, so yeah, in this case, we're just gonna, you know, just made a custom instance of the waterfall material uh, so that I can kind of play with it. And I know that I kind of want to go towards purple on this one, just because, well, purple looks good when it comes to effects. Um, and I'm gonna overdrive the value just to give it some more emissive. And we'll drop these to black. Can and could that? you explain yes. what um, overdriving a value is? Yes. Um, so when it comes to colors, uh, colors on the value slider in particular, and actually the RGB values as well, can be overdriven. Any value over one is considered an overdriven value. And this just means that with the uh, most of the effect materials, this is going to translate into uh, contributing to the emissive. Uh, so it's going to start glowing. So if we crank this value, uh, we overdrive this to say 50. There we go. We've got a really nice glow going on. Um, so that's, uh, that's what I mean when I'm saying overdrive. Uh, now, when it comes to a lot of our parameters, especially on the effects, um, uh, the materials, etc., we provide a range of values. And this range is the range in which we intend it to kind of work properly. And in our testing, that is where it works best. It is not by any means a hard value. And you can get some very interesting effects oh. by taking it beyond those values. Now, in some cases, that can lead to, you know, improper behavior. So it's definitely something that you do cautiously. Um, but in some cases, it can uh, do some really fun things. Um, like on this arc here, the arc value just, it shapes the waterfall. So you can have a straight waterfall or a curved one. In this case, if you overdrive it, um, oh, wow, that, that really goes, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> um, it, it can get surprising, but a little value, a little overdrive there seems to work okay. Wow, that I never knew why mm -hmm. um, you could overdrive the sliders. Um, wow, but it's because those are the values they work best in. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We, we set a recommended range. Um, but like I said, the effects in uh, core definitely reward experimentation. Uh, the more you play with it, the more you'll get out of it. Um, like in this case, 
we might want to give it a bit of energy here. You know, really crank up the mm -hmm. speed. Uh, okay, maybe that's too much. Uh, yeah, there we go. That, that'll do. Um, just for a quick basic, right? And then um, let's see here. We want to get rid of that shine. So we're going to take the roughness up. Um, do, 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 do. There we go. Okay, so that's got a little. Oh, yeah, I'll take it all the way up to one. Uh, so now this waterfall just became an energy type element. And if we maybe do a quick search here and find the speed bubble. Speed bubble's one of my uh, one of my favorite little toys for just being fun to fiddle with. Uh, it has a lot of properties and a lot of different ways in which you can combine it with other effects to make some really interesting, interesting looks. Um, just to, and we'll separate it out here. As I'm just fiddling with some of these values. Um, so when it comes to making effects in core for your game, one thing I recommend uh, really thinking about is how can you layer them in different ways to achieve different looks uh, because oftentimes they work really well when combined with other effects because i mean that's that's your standard approach for effects development anyways is you take very simple elements and combine them all together to make something that is visually a lot more complex than its constituent parts. Um, so like in this case here, well, sorry about the relative size of the properties view here. Um, but yeah, let's see, let's get some more repetitions in there. Maybe we'll change the overall appearance. And then I did have a few questions from oh, yeah. chat would now be a good time to ask. Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay, great. So um, Dejected Always um, had a question about the map. Um, they were wondering, is this project available to look around in? It looks great. Um, you know, I haven't published this yet. Uh, I certainly can, though. Um, I'll have to update some things because it does have some uh, work in progress stuff. Oh, I should probably add that disclaimer, too. Uh, during this stream, you will see some work in progress assets. Um, these come with your standard disclaimer. They are subject to change. They aren't finished yet. And you may see a bug or two. But yeah, mm -hmm. I will be teasing a few uh, a few fun tools. Neo um, leaks. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Yes. Um, yeah, ho hopefully nobody minds. <laughs> um, but. Uh, yeah, okay, uh, so... once once I get some things cleaned up, I can certainly uh, release this for people to take a look at and play with. Excellent. And then uh, we have uh, another question. This one is from uh, Flex Chadwell, who asks, um, could you make um, the uh, waterfall circle you're working on uh, very oversized and um, overdrive it a bunch? Uh, do you think it could work as a black hole? Yeah, yeah, I think it probably could. That's a good idea. Good question. Ooh, ooh flex. Um, With the great ideas. Oh, actually, yeah, that's what we should do. Let's stick it up in the sky. Make it a kind of background element for the city. Everyone in town's about to have a really bad day. <laughs> oh, there we oh, go. Yeah. I can... What? Kind of dig that. And we'll duplicate that. Let me mute my phone here. Sorry about that. There we go. Hey, we're streaming here. I oh, know. <laughs> All righty. Uh, let's see here. Wow. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. Ooh. I thought Flex said you were new to Core. How did you come up with such a great idea right off the bat? That's awesome. Yes, it, yeah, yeah, that was a good idea, good suggestion. Oh, and um, then Nez uh, Beret or Nez Barret uh, asks, "Can you reverse the speed?" 
<laughs> he knows that we can. Yes, we Ooh. can. That, Mesbere, yes. is our <laughs> other effects artist, who I hope will be streaming sometime in the future. Uh, yes, in fact, all of this wonderful neon that you see, all these little neon strips, are the product of his hard work. Oh, uh, yes. heck yeah. He did a wonderful job on putting together all of these little bits and dealing with my, you know, oh, can we have a little one that is <laughs> just this little curve? And yes, yes. And it was an amazing set and a tremendous amount of work on his part. So, yeah, yeah. Hats off to, to uh, Nesper on that. Yes. Um, let's see here. Oh, that's right. Black hole. I was in the middle of that. See? Magpie mind here. Um, so let's see. Oh, yes. What we can do here. Let's go ahead and add some kind of core to it. Uh, oh. And just to actually follow through on uh, the other one there, the question of can we reverse it? Uh, yes, indeed, we can. There we go. Yeah, that looks good. Um, and maybe we'll dupe that in for another another round. Yeah, I don't know. That's starting to feel a little, a little odd. Let's add a flare to it. See if we can get a uh, nice good core in the center here. So we'll toss out one of my favorites, which is the flare billboard. Um, up at this height, it's kind of hard to see it, so we'll... Go ahead and embiggenate this. Um, let's see. 50 and 50. Oh, it doesn't like being that far away. Yes, no. Oh, K-pop Sim says, OMG, I love oh, the player billboard too. It's so simple yet powerful. Whoa. There we are. Another fan of the flair. Oh, the flair is, uh, I really do enjoy it. It is, uh, it, it's amazing what you can do with just a few very simple shapes. Um, in this case, oh, this one's additive. So we're not going to be able to take it full black. That's right. Oh, that's unfortunate. I'll have to see to that in the future. Uh, but we can still go over the flare because it is one of those that is just ridiculously handy. Um, so the flare billboard setup is just, it's a simple object. It always faces the camera. Um, and it's got a few very basic uh, shapes. And this is, I think, one of my favorite things about it. You can stretch it out on the width and then tell it to rotate the texture, tell it to auto rotate. And now you have this thing that is, it's not like your traditional rotation because uh, it actually stretches out. So you can go through and duplicate it a few times, stretch it uh, maybe vertically and start getting this kind of really interesting um, Oh, I don't know. It's like a, uh, you know, kind of like the spotlight style flares that you see on sci-fi product displays that are holographic. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. Uh, of course, you can always overdrive the boost if you really like the glow. Oh, and K-pop Sim adds, um, yes. I love using the flare as a super cheap spotlight for illuminating inaccessible areas oh what a great idea mm -hmm. yeah yeah that is a good use for it yeah absolutely um but yeah i do like that one that one's fun um it can also uh another one that's mildly related to this and i found out the other day most people don't know about it um it is the uh oh not flare halo the sun halo. Now, uh, this is another case of well, we name something something, but really it can be used in a bunch of different situations. So sun halo, first thing you think is, yeah, it's a halo for the sun. So you can do these nice uh, 
nice little rays or what have you. But what it is, is it's a type of generator um, that allows you to create just about a gazillion little shapes. Um, they're radially lined, so you can go through and start doing some really kind of interesting things with them. Wow. Um, yeah, and apparently it's not really well known that this is Yeah, there. I want to say, I don't think I've ever seen this one before. Yeah, this, wow. one's, this one's quite fun. Um, and to follow up on that, um, I'll, I'll tease a little bit of uh, something else we've been working on, um, which is the magic circle, which is based on the same principle. So this one is not live yet, but uh, wow. hopefully will be in the near future. Um, and it's essentially just a little procedural uh, circle generator for doing all sorts of fun things. Um, in this case, we'll just drop it back down to the one and maybe increase our repetitions up. Oh, wow. This one mm. looks incredibly versatile. Yeah, it's it's definitely, it, it's got some, uh, it's definitely got some flex to it. Um, you can do a whole bunch of things with it. Uh, so, oh, let's mm. see. I have a question, somebody. if now is a good time to ask. Oh, by all means. Uh, so when you're designing these VFX, how mm. do you uh, anticipate their different uses? Um, I guess I'm just looking at the circle and seeing all of the um, kind of different ways you can manipulate it. How do you come up with what to change um, or manipulate the parameters? A lot of it is just thinking of how it could be used. Um, what its original purpose might be. Um, you know, in the case, uh, a lot of times it, you know, they just kind of come to us huh. just naturally because it's, you know, you toss out a fire. Okay, well, I expect to be able to make the fire taller, wider, uh, brighter, things like that. Um, mm. And so you think about how an effect is going to be used and kind of go from there and think about you know what things would be necessary in a real development you know what would i go through and change if i was putting this in these different situations and just kind of playing with it going from there and trying to figure out uh oh, oh that's a bit fast <laughs> um, so yeah this one definitely allows for a lot of variations and uh yeah i'll take that out there maybe add a few of them we'll drop the overall emissive and you can start to get in oh my once you start layering them you can really really get some cool stuff um okay and then uh nesbure in chat says i made a gun that shoots magic circles that shoots magic swords it's a lot of fun oh my god well i think i know what nesbure will be streaming about <laughs> <laughs> or what i'll ask him to no pressure nesbure uh, <laughs> that's awesome but yeah, this one uh, this one definitely promises to have some. Uh, I, I'm really really excited to see what people make with it. Um, yeah, I've had so is... much fun playing with it um, as I've been developing it. Because yeah, you really can. Um, we've added parameters for animating things to make it uh, a little bit simpler to animate, so you can go through and have different fades uh all right yeah we already anyways. have like people in chat trying to um decide what they're going to use the magic circles <laughs> for so we have like fairy lights or snowflakes oh we have um 
a question from Pop Those Pringles. Uh, they say, hello, are all those properties exposed as smart properties for scripting at runtime? I know some smart properties mm. which aren't, would be nice to have access to every single one. Yeah, in the case of the Magic Circle, um, I anticipated that there would be a lot of animation for that. Um, and in fact, oh, let me undo. There we go. So I actually did set up something for that uh, here. Um, I've got a script uh, that's making use of our new curve editor, um, which this makes animation so much simpler. Uh, it's wow. something that's uh, that's coming soon. I can't, you know, I won't steal somebody else's thunder, you know, oh. but... Uh, they're doing some really, really amazing work with it. Um, yeah, this is awesome. Neil, you should stream all the time. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm loving this stream. I'm seeing things I didn't um, even know were possible in core. Oh, I'm just in love with go. the magic circle, ah, I have to say. There it is. <laughs> so in this case, um, oh, let me... What? Uh, oh. Let me turn off the scrolling here so we just get the... So that's the... And I've got a bug in my script, so ignore that. Um, but that's one of the properties being animated. Um, many of the properties can be animated. Uh, I did go through and in the tooltips on it, I've called out certain properties that can be animated, should be animated, and some that cannot be animated. Uh, just because it would, uh, like, if you have a large number of them, um, it can take a moment to regenerate uh, if you change some properties. So some of them I have prevented from being changed at runtime just because it would be uh, a little... A little heavy, a little too heavy mm. for use, unfortunately. But the majority of them are animatable. Um, so you can change like the offsets, like this distance. Things that are just basically, if you imagined each one of these being an object, if you're just changing the transform, stuff like that's changeable. Things that are fixed values, like the count, uh, or rather integer values, because it would cause a pop. I generally don't uh, expose those for that. Uh, just because popping in effects, very, very bad. Draws the eye. Okay. Wait, um, what's, a, what's a pop? Uh, so if you imagine an explosion that appears, when it appears, it's got things that explain why it's appearing, right? So if we toss out an explosion here, uh, we'll just go with a basic explosion. Okay, so with this, you get a flash of light, and then the rest of the explosion appears, but none of it just is instantly there. There is a progression, and when it disappears, likewise, there is a progression. There's a fade out, there's a dissolve, something along those lines, something that explains why it's going away. Now, if we set this up here, um, all right, this one can't. But if I hit play and then, uh, let me see if I can actually do this. No, I can't play and delete at the same time. Um, there you go. So when something just disappears uh. without properly cleaning up, it tends to look bad ear. I notices that there was a thing there, then there isn't something there, and it's drawn to it. And most of the time, that's not the way you want to draw somebody's eye. Uh, you want to do so in a more pleasing fashion. Mm. So pops are bad. Uh, just as a general rule, sometimes they're very, very useful, but other times less so. Oh, thank you for explaining that. Yeah, this is another fun one that's uh, that's coming soon. Actual lightning that you can oh do things with, and this one is animatable. Uh, 
to a very high degree. Um, you can control the onset duration, flash duration, how long it holds there, how long it fades, but I'll save that one for another time. Um, because we were going to talk about bulbs. Straight somewhat from the whole bulb thing. <laughs> so if you guys have not played with these bulbs um, or the neon, I highly recommend it. Um, one, because it's a lot of fun. And two, because they're really, really useful for adding additional life to an otherwise mm -hmm. static scene. Um, because if you take this blank floor here, you know, there's nothing going on, there's no life, and this is a lot of scenes. You'll see just nothingness. You know, there's no, there's no life to it. Mm -hmm. So adding blinking things or you know, signage, stuff like that, especially, well, in a city environment, it really helps. But these are also kind of smart, uh, as smart as a material can be, anyways. Because um, you can go through and we'll dupe this material out. Um, there we are. And apply it back to these guys. So with this, you can set up these really interesting, you know, chains of animation. So like, you can do that kind of classic flickering, you know, pulsing. Wow. Um, yeah, they've got several different programs, as it were. You know, and adjusting the pattern speed or the pattern value especially can have very interesting effects. Um, and in some cases, like if you're doing a sci-fi hallway or what have you, um, that flickering, pulsing can be really disconcerting and... Uh, give you a really kind of creepy vibe um, that classic uh failing neon oh yeah flicker mm -hmm. but you can also um so these uh, these are kind of cool too because you can give them an animation vector so oops Where'd they go? There they are. All right. So we'll just go ahead and dupe a bunch of these out because it makes it a lot easier to see. So notice as we get more of these out here, um, and really it's just, it, it's a distance based thing. So we're starting to get these flowing patterns. Um, and as we adjust the pattern value, you can set up different looks and feels. So right now they're just going to go straight down X because we've got this uh, negative one on the animation vector. So we set it to one, now they're suddenly going the other direction. Uh, likewise, if we were to, oops, there we go. Set that to zero and that to one. So it makes it really easy to control how and which way they animate. Mm -hmm. and you can set it up to go in diagonals. All just through controlling this one parameter. Um, I rather, rather like this one. It's a lot of fun. Oh, um, yeah. But the... Uh, all of our fonts, um, sorry, not all of our fonts, a few of our fonts in the 3D fonts have a set of signage font bulbs. So you can Whoa. do the same thing. Um, 
And we do have like these, uh, let's see, where is these? Okay, so yeah. So if we toss this guy out and then go here and toss the other one, it automatically slots in there. Um, makes it nice and easy to set up. But we'll go ahead and drag this on here. And likewise, this will do the same sort of animation setup as the other ones. Um, though these actually have a few other prop oops, a few other properties. But you can imagine if this was a logo or something along those lines, you know, like the theater up there or any of these. I don't think I have one that's actually filling. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the take your money jewelers. Um, <laughs> yeah, that one's doing a nice little scroll. The neon and the bulbs all have uh, similar behaviors. So... Similar uh, control schemes, but. Awesome. And then we oh did have some questions in chat. Um, awesome. There was one from Mad Monty TV. Uh, this was pertaining to the magic circles. Uh, they mm -hmm. ask, is there a way to solidify the magic circles to create 3D effects? Mm. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, oh. Now, uh, the reason for that is just it's strictly performance. Um, ah. So if you take the magic circles, for example, um, so say we have, uh, yeah, I'll turn this guy back on. You can, with just a few of them in a way that is not horribly unperformant, uh, you can layer a few of them like this to get a oh. more oh. 3D effect. And if you were to go through and on each one of these, just progressively drop the emissive value. So like in this case, uh, you know, we'll start this guy off. Where's the emissive value? All right, we'll start him off at, say, 5. And then the next one will drop to 2.5. And then we'll do 1.5. And then we'll go ahead and add another one. And set this one to 0.1. Yeah, 0.2. Yeah. So you can do that. Uh, for a more solid wow. effect. Let me turn off my grid snap though, because these are too, sp so uh, they're a little too spaced out right now. Um, so we'll just go ahead and drop, and drop that guy in and then drop the next one. And can get kind of hard to see what's going on, especially when they're dancing like this yeah this is like um, <laughs> very psychedelic looking yeah in this case <laughs> um yeah but so here you can kind of get that um and actually what we probably should do here is switch it over to something a uh, little more what it would be right uh so let's say well let's try and find reset the distance drop this down to one there we go okay make sure we're an even height and width there we go now we can start to see okay so let's see it's 1.6 and so if you do a progressive layering like this you can get a more vaporous kind of raised look and of course the more layers you add now it's not a fully solid 3d look um, that would require a lot more stacks um, and the reason i wouldn't recommend that is just because overdraw um, which tends to be you know not great for performance 
Uh, what that is, is just where you, you have to render the same section of the screen multiple times instead of just rendering it once. Um, and so uh -huh. when you start to overlap, this is, this is one of the reasons that particle effects tend to be more expensive than most other things, is because in order to get like this look here, uh, there's several particles layered and we mask like the ground intersection there, but these are at their core just flat planes that face the camera. Um, yeah. But by stacking them, we're telling the graphics card, okay, you've got to render this section of screen over and over and over and over again. And the more layers you have, the longer it's going to take, especially if that uh, material happens to be relatively expensive. Um, now, in this case, it's a pretty simple additive material, which means it just adds to whatever's behind it. Uh, so for the most part, it's relatively cheap. Um, but nevertheless, the more, the more layers you add, the longer it's going to take. Uh, so it's something you can do. Just be cognizant of the overall impact it might have in some situations. If it's going to be small on screen, you know, something like this, then that's probably okay. If it's going to be full screen, then know that it's drawing the full screen X number of times. Huh. Oh, and then Mad Monty TV has a follow-up question. Um, uh, they ask, so you can layer it like an array, but I'm guessing you mm -hmm. can't turn the flat plane of the magic circle into a 3D mesh. Oh, actually, that's a... Uh, so I do have a vertical version included. Um, oh. So it's not a full 3D... So you can't turn it into a 3D mesh, but you can certainly add what? more depth to it. Um, oh my gosh, I am gonna have to like fully explore this VFX when it's finally released because yeah. I, I mean, what other, what else can you do with it? <laughs> oh, awesome. oh yeah, there's <laughs> there is really quite a lot. Um, like in this case, you can go through and uh, so we've got several different symbol sets and each symbol set has 64 symbols, give or take. Um, oh my God. So like in this case, you know, you can enable dual texturing. And so we've got symbol, you know, shape 23 here. Yeah, well, we'll go with that one. And then we've got glyph 5. I don't know what glyph 5 is offhand, but... You can go through and blend the two, and each Whoa. one has its own repetition rate. Um, now, again, some of this is still subject to change, uh, but yeah, you can use that to make shapes that we didn't really provide initially, um, and to kind of layer them while keeping it all on the same object, which means that you can still, oops, keep doing that. Um, so, and one of the cool things about that is you can do this. Um, uh, oops. Yeah, actually, that's, Okay. I'm just like thinking Working like these could be bug. like magical <laughs> crowns or like mm -hmm. there the obvious like buff and debuff uh, symbols. Yes, I'm hoping that they will be very useful for um, indicating uh, certain debuffs and <laughs> whatnot. Uh, that and you know they're just they're fun. I've yeah, always, I've always liked the magic circles. Um, from anime and whatnot, and that was a large part of the inspiration behind these. Um, oh, awesome! So, yeah, so lots of lots of fun things, and of course, like I was mentioning earlier, you know, it is really beneficial to play with layering, because um, you can get a whole bunch of very interesting effects through. Just a few very simple, you know, layering 
aspects. Um, like in this case too, we do have some very basic uh, primitive type shapes, you know, like your standard band. And since you can change the thickness of the band itself dynamically as well as scale the object, you can start building, wow. you know, kind of your own interesting little uh, circles. Just kind of whatever. It's, you know, for me, it's the creation aspect is every bit as fun as playing the games. So these are somewhat toys um, they're just really useful toys so any All more right. questions well, yeah one more question this is from mad monty tv who i think is rather taken with the magic circle judging by how many questions they have about it um thank you for asking oh, uh, monty uh, they ask is there a way to offset the vertical circles to get spiral effects um, no, you cannot. Not at the moment. Um, so let's, uh, what you can do, though, is like, uh, so you can, of course, it can be rotated, right? So you can go through and do certain things like, uh, Yeah, uh, we want something a little more spiky, maybe. Oh, yeah, that'll do. Um, let's give it a little bit of that. So, you can go through and start uh, combining these to do more interesting almost three-dimensional style effects. Um, now, of course, these are not looking especially great at the moment. Um, but hopefully can kind of get the point across um, where you can kind of, oh, actually, you know what? You could fake a spiral, maybe. I'm trying to think here how you would do it. Yeah, aside from trying to do it like that, which, yeah. Well, though, oh, that's right. That's right. I forgot. Duh. Um, one of the uh, shapes in here is a, um, so there's half circles and quarter circles. With wow. a quarter circle, you actually could go through and just duplicate it out with a bit of orientation. And to handle this edge, you can, um, I do have a generic edge fade. So you could enable that and then just kind of uh, start layering them like this and slowly build it up. But yeah, yeah, unfortunately, no, there's no, there's no good way to get a spiral at the moment. Hmm. I'll have to think but, about that. Uh, yeah, Mad Monty, we are always um, looking for new suggestions on uh, stuff. And actually, Mad Monty did have a new suggestion already <laughs> for an element set, runes. Um, we do have the rune hmm. decals if you're interested, but I do agree uh, element set um, for VFX would be fun. And uh, let's see, is there a way to bend the planes over an axis, axes? Uh, no, they do not support bending at the moment. Uh, you can, however, um, you can adjust the width and the height independently, um, which actually comes in a lot of handy when you have uh, like some of these bands. Um, Wow. I feel like I have like 50 new ideas for this already. Oops. Oh my God. There we go. So yeah, I mean, you, you can do things like this, but no, you can't bend it like vertically up or anything like that, but 
Yeah, so a, a sneak peek of the uh, of the magic circles. Hopefully, you all will enjoy them. Yeah, um, I am so excited for these to make their way over to uh, Prod. <laughs> all right. Um, so what's what's next, Neil? Um. Well, let's see. Um, so we have about 10 minutes left. So chat minutes. if you have any specific questions um, for Neil, uh, maybe about how to achieve a certain look, or if you have any questions mm. about a specific oh. VFX, um, now would be a great time to ask. So, yeah, and actually, while we're uh, waiting for the questions, I can, uh, one thing I can show here that is kind of useful is our materials are incredibly flexible, um, especially on the VFX end. Uh, we try to make those as flexible as the effects themselves. Um, oh, haha, the plasma. So the plasma is a good example of this. Uh, where is the plasma laser? Uh, doo -doo. Where oh, is the plasma laser? If I had a nickel for every I time I heard know. that. <laughs> oh my god. So this one in particular, uh, I rather like. Um, it is just basically a material effect. Now, it's slightly different in that you can't just apply it to any object because it's got certain properties that need to be, you know, set for it. But... Um, a lot of the existing materials have similar setups because, you know, in this case, we just wanted to make sure that you could animate all of these parameters. So we uh, made it a smart object instead. Since our materials um, can't be animated at the moment. Oh. Um, Lua. But this one is a smart object that allows you to do that, and you can use it for full on weapons. Um, since everything can be animated, it can have a life of uh, life of its own, any life you give it. Cool. Um, oh, we do have one question from yes. Stay Punnies. Stay Punny asks, um, I have a question about collision of some of the VFX. Is there a way to turn it off? Um, at the moment, there is not. Um, that is something that uh, we've discussed amongst ourselves a few times. Um, mm -hmm. Because so we're in some instances uh, a little limited with how we can lay out the effects. Um, just due to certain engine limitations at the moment. Um, but so for some of them, what we've done in the case of like, for instance, the rocks, uh, I think the rock one has collision. Um, oftentimes what you can do is hide the layer itself, um, which isn't ideal because you might want the visual layer, just not the collision. Um, but that is something that we are looking into and it is on our radar. So hopefully oh, cool. in the future, you will be able to disable collision on all the effects. Um, now, most effects don't have any collision. I assume in this case that we are referring to like when we have like this guy here. Uh, let me make his particle scale a little bit larger where it collides with the ground. Um, mm. So in cases like this, yeah, that's just part of the particle system. And we do... We did recently get the ability to enable and disable certain aspects of that, so we may be able to address that uh, in the not-so-distant future. 
Oh, awesome. Oh, and Stay Punny says it was the effect of a uh, rock destroying. <laughs> oh, you knew right away. Oh. Yeah, it's uh yeah, it's been one of those things on my uh, uh on my personal list for a while. Um because sometimes it is great to have that collision, but it's better to have the option to have that mm. collision. Yes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. This one's fun. I do have so much fun with all of our effects. They are. I have to say, I Neil, I think your job is awesome, and it's very clear you enjoy it greatly. Oh, it's it, it is uh, it is fantastic. Yes, I I adore it. I am incredibly lucky. Um, I mean, I could not imagine doing anything else for a living. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, you're kind of like a a mad scientist, just creating things in this sandbox, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not exactly easy work, but it is fun work. Um, I think fun and challenging is often the best combination. Oh, yes, agreed. Um, awesome. Yeah. And um, so, Neil, any uh, closing thoughts for the stream? Oh, um, play. <laughs> Play with the effects, play with all the properties, come up with new and wondrous things, uh, because I love seeing everything that everybody does with them. It is just, uh, it is really inspiring to see what people do. And it's very motivating to, to see someone take something and be like, oh, wow, okay, I hadn't thought of using it that way. You know what? If we did this... It could do all these other things too. And so it is just wonderful to see people playing with the things. So yeah, that would be my closing thoughts is play with all of the parameters, just fiddle and have fun with it and make awesome things. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Neil, for coming on. This was a really amazing and insightful stream. Um, and folks, if you want Neil to come on again, let us know. And uh, if you want Nesbury mm-hmm. to come on and show you uh, lightning on lightning and magic circles coming out of guns with swords coming out of the magic circles, uh, let us know as well. Um, I'll thank you for watching and uh, we'll come back at you next week. All right, Neil, and then you just press that little stop streaming button. Oh, thank you for Mm -hmm. having me.